<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri, currently surrounded by bunnies, puppies, and giraffes, and we are here at the giraffe barn in Zudesia Zoo! Oh my goodness, there's been so much going on! I am so excited to show you guys the fence for the safari zone has been finished! It's been finished, the whole thing! I'm so excited because it's actually a lot bigger than you would think it would be. I'll take you guys on a tour today, I think, because you need to get a full sense of the scale of the current safari zone. Zone. And like I mentioned before, we might do some terraforming and we might do, uh, especially over in the desert, a lot of terraforming. Hire some scientists to transform that into some beautiful savanna and build some like bridges or land bridges so that we can expand the area even more. Or maybe we'd be able to keep the lions on this side and then we could have like a little bridge for the, the jeep tour, but the lions wouldn't be able to like cross over and bother all the animals in this safari zone. So, hmm. A lot of choices, a lot of a lot of awesome animals that we can add into our zoo. But the fencing is done! The carpenters did a great job, and I will show you that in just a second. I'll give you a little tour of the size of the safari zone so that you guys can help me come up with some ideas of what kind of animals we should add in there. Though, rumor has it that there are actually many, many, many ostriches in the other zoo crafters' zoos. Especially, I think, Eros and Pavo have definitely got ostrich exhibits built. Eros have recently hatched up some fresh ostrich eggs, and that means that we may uh, we may start some sort of uh, ostrich exchange. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly what animals I could offer them in exchange, but I'm sure we could check our Walji Research Center and dig up some lovely eggs to trade them in return for their ostrich eggs. That is the kind of uh, inter inter zoo collaboration that we do here in zoo crafting. But all right, Keeper Birch, how are you doing today? Oh, don't mind me. Just taking care of the enclosure. The herd is getting bigger lately. It is! It is! With May and her little baby, and that reminds me of something special that we have in the giraffe barn that I need to show you guys. So, first off, we have Keeper Lee keeping a good eye on our lovely May and her beautiful baby boy. And oh my goodness, you guys have given me... Oh! I wish we could add a wider variety of plants, but I'm no plant expert. We need a botanist. <gasps> that sounds like a job for me, or maybe a real botanist who could possibly come here as an NPC and, uh, you know, offer up trades for some of those rare savanna items. I may have plans. I may have plans indeed. But yes, so the baby boy is still doing great. He's very healthy, just like uh, his distant cousin April's young male giraffe calf that she had. May has been taking good care of her baby as well. You guys have left so many amazing names. I am going to have to go through. I'm going to use like my, my favorite names will be picked out and then also names using random generators for the comments will be picked out. And then what I think we're going to do is a fantastic live stream event where we will do some live voting for the baby giraffe name. So that's going to be really exciting. I'm not exactly sure how it will work out yet, but keep your eyes out. I will do lots of announcements before it happens and we will have a wonderful giraffe baby name extravaganza and a tour of Zudesia Zoo. So that'll be coming up soon because I'm really tickled with how many of you want to do live streams and I'm really looking forward to it, especially because we've had so many fantastic improvements to the zoo. What could this uh, nifty little book be hiding? Some fantastic ideas that you guys had, that's what. But before I get into the book, I'm going to show you guys the new way that when we and any of the other zoo crafters of the world or possibly some collaboration guests that we may have in the future, uh, if they want to come and earn some zookeeper experience taking care of the giraffes here in our safari zone, then Keeper Lee has set up a nice little giraffe bar and supply box. So this is really fun since one of the main goals is to definitely learn how these animals are taken care of in captivity in the real world. That's why we have the giraffe care sheet. And if we come over and do our research, dun 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 dun, the giraffe care barn guide. Zookeepers, please be sure to review your task list for the day and make sure the giraffes are properly cared for. A reminder of proper feeding guidelines are listed below. And to put together these gui dietary guidelines, I actually use a really amazing website about zoo nutrition. It's a lot of fun to look over. I'll put a link down in the comments below. It's really cool if you just want to learn more about the research behind how they take care of animals in zoos and in captivity or uh, like at conservation centers. It's really fun because there's a lot of important zoo nutrition that needs to be studied in order to do our best to take care of these animals in captivity and also to learn from 
their feeding patterns and behaviors so that we can look at their wild counterparts and how to better protect their wild counterparts and their food sources or vice versa. So dietary guidelines for a giraffe, they're browsing herbivores who eat a wide variety of leaves, young tree shoots, seeds, and pods. Over 100 different plants have been recorded as being part of the giraffe's diet. The bulk of their diet is made up of a few species of trees and woody bushes, and acacia species are favored by all giraffes recorded. Giraffes consume up to 75 to 165 pounds of browse per day, which is a lot. A browse basically means leaves, which is why we have so many hanging from the top of the giraffe barn. And in order to take care of all of our giraffes, we need to provide them with a lot of browse. So if we come over to the giraffe barn supply box, then dun 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 dun! Check it out! There's new things! There's new things we can do in order to earn some zookeeper experience here in the zoo! Ah, oh, I love making rhymes. But we've got the acacia leaves, which is one of the favorite things that giraffes like to eat. Acacia saplings, fig saplings, bananas, lettuce, carrots, palm leaves, willow leaves. Uh, we've also got just grass, which in this case is stepping in to represent alfalfa. And I probably said that wrong. I have a lot of trouble al alpha. I have so much trouble with the, the darn word. But grass you can also gather up and get zookeeper experience points if you have. Tall grass containers, which is just grass that's been combined into like a block, can be brought over. Spice leaves, which are actually supposed to represent like the clovers and al alpha. I hate that word so much. It's supposed to represent those things. And then there's also special dietary biscuits that you can make for giraffes that we too could now make perhaps during a cough cough zoo kitchen episode. I was really excited to see how many of you guys miss zoo kitchen. And so that's definitely going to be something I'll try to bring back if I have some bonus time. But we have the little biscuit. Uh, so you can make biscuits, the dietary biscuits. Don't confuse those with the biscuits that you're going to like eat at Thanksgiving dinner. And bring those over to the giraffes and earn those beautiful zookeeper experience points to show that we're really committed to taking care of the animals in our zoo. And actually looking over the banana, I have bananas! And looking over the, the lettuce and the carrots, it makes me want to plant some banana trees nearby so that we can just like go and pick them. And actually we do have the little Enderman like reserve over here that might be good territory for bananas, but I don't know. We'll have to talk about the Enderman forest another day. Those of you who have been around a while remember it. But what would we do with all of this beautiful, beautiful zookeeper experience? Well, there's actually a comment on our special Red Wolf episode from a couple seasons ago that someone left recently and it just blew my mind. What to do with the zookeeper experience? Breeding certificates, of course. Making it so we can have permission to be able to breed the animals in our zoo institution. Just like in real life, you should never, ever, ever just helter-skelter go and let your animals have tons and tons of babies, especially when they happen to be six feet tall and require hundreds of pounds of brows once they reach full adult size. Uh, oh, look how cute he is! Oh my gosh, he's adorable! So now when we work hard as a zookeeper in our zoo to get the experience points, we can come on over and we can use those experience points in exchange doo, 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 for giraffe breeding certificates. So that's one of the things we can get. And if you guys have more ideas for what we could do with the zookeeper experience points, they're kind of like our perks and upgrades in order to show that we take good care of our animals in the zoo. Zookeeper experience points can only be earned by helping to take care of tasks within Zudesia Zoo. There's other zoos in our world too where some of the other zookeepers and zoo crafters set up systems like this. I know E-Rose has her rose quartz system and I would love to go just like work in her zoo for a while. That would be really fun. That might be like a special live stream event or that might be something that we'll just have fun with in the future. But the giraffe breeding certificate would allow us to use a couple apples to have some new baby giraffes brought into the world. So I think that'd be really fun. And then we've also got um, the savanna botanist. So you remember Keeper Lee was talking about how nice it would be to have a savanna botanist who could actually... Uh, all right, May, time for your checkup. If you're good, I'll give you a banana. Oh gosh, that's so cute. I had no idea that, um, I had no, no, no idea that giraffes liked bananas so much until I started doing research. Because in the pictures of people feeding them, you always see lettuce, which I agree is delicious. But like we could get in some of the prairie grass. Um, I wonder, grass, 
there's just so many different types of grasses that would look really good that we could use as decorations in our exhibits around here that I don't know where they are and I really hate like ripping up all of the plants from the biomes out in the world because we're going to keep this world for years so you don't really want to like just destroy all of it so if we can hire a botanist we can buy some of these plants from them or get some of these plants from them in exchange for zookeeper experience points and thus decorate our zoo more oh my goodness I know it's a lot of talking but trust me setting up these NPCs is important. All right. And then the other things that we've got, uh, and you may notice this is level two zookeeper experience. So you take your normal zookeeper experience, which is worth 64, like 64 little paws, and you can now exchange it for level two zookeeper experience because you need a little bit more than just the norm of experience. You can't just go over and gather up something like, um, you know, 16 bananas and walk away with permission to like have giraffe calves born in your zoo. It takes a little bit more work than that. And then there's also the botanist. And then over here for level three zookeeper experience, which is much harder to get, you could have a live webcam. So we would set up a little live webcam inside of our barn. You know, and then yeah, you guys would have a special video. You could go and uh, watch a live webcam of our giraffes. It may not really be live, but cough, cough. We can, uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. But I thought that would be really fun to have. And we could work together to try to get enough zookeeper experience for that and update it. So there's an option just to give examples of what the experience points could be used for. And then we also have statues. Perhaps Disco Zoo inspired this in me. But giraffe, uh, stone giraffe statues, lapis lazuli giraffe statues, emerald giraffe statues, and diamond giraffe statues, which would be ridiculously a lot of work to get. But those are some examples of the little perks that we could have inside of the zoo based off of the zookeeper experience points. And if you guys have more ideas for those perks, please let me know because I would love to add them in. <sighs> All right, so enough talkie talkie Lee. I need to do some actual work today. So let's grab Lily and Tate and I'm going to show you guys what our brand new exhibit looks like. Oh, I'm so excited. Putting a around something really does make it so you can just smack some animals inside and call it an exhibit half the time all right everybody oh oh thank you for the donate oh my oh wow they're really donating a lot thank you for the donations but please like be careful I'm really glad you can see there we go the fencing has been finished off so the glass fencing over there has been finished off and the fencing up along this area has been finished off uh, originally we were going to have this whole area be the open safari but I'm beginning to realize it'd be good to have this spot. Oh, thank you so much for your donations, everyone. <laughs> Maybe I could get like a nice little smoothie with it. But we talked last time about turning this spot into a lovely little tent area. So we're going to set up some tents for the guests so they have somewhere to rest. Zudesia Zoo is a long way away from many other places in the world. So it makes sense that you would need to spend the night from time to time. It is a uh, fully interactive home or like fully interactive like place. You could probably, it's like a theme park. You could probably spend most of your life here if you really tried honestly I know I do but this is just such a lovely spot so we are going to build some tents over here that people can rest in using the wool did I bring my wool where'd my wool go oh I only have a little bit of wool we'll have to work on that but we're going to build those over here for people to rest inside of and then we need to get some paths and I thought it might be nice to have like some small exhibits kind of where uh, biologist Corey has been settled down with his flamingos and capybara which I swear are like breeding. I don't remember that many capybara. So we might have an exhibit over there and then a nice set of paths, maybe some fountains and things. And then it'll work its way over to the back of the area where we have the giraffe research and breeding barn. And then over here, dun 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 dun, is going to be where the proper open safari zone begins. And we will have to build a little Jeep tour to grow around it. But we've got a lovely little set of fencing. It now protects the big giant termite mound and the fence goes all all the way across dun, dun, dun. and then this is going to eventually be that spot where we can oh you know what I should probably put some fencing right there that's gonna open up just right into a, a straight-up ravine and I don't think that would be very good Lily Tate oh my that could definitely cause some problems with my guest all right do I have any fencing or anything <laughs> I have some cobblestone slabs that is gonna have to do for the moment. Oh, I can't wait till we start doing like building building. All right. So is that gonna protect everybody? That should protect everybody just for a little while. 
oh, the satisfaction of putting blocks down. It's been so long. It's been so long, Tate. But this is going to eventually become either like a little bat cave or just like a little uh, view area where you can view the ravine. Oh, geez. I'm so glad I put that slab down. Please be careful. Don't just wander into random holes in the ground. Do you know nothing? Oh my gosh. All right. But yeah, the fencing blocks this area off and then loops around so that it will protect the guest on this side too. And they just threw a bunch of trash on the ground. Whew, I'm gonna have to hire a janitor, I swear. All right, and there's another bun bun. So we have some bunnies, but we are now officially inside of the safari zone. And I'm pretty excited about this because it's big, hopefully big enough to be able to include some elephants. So we'll have elephants. We will have some Jimsbrock. We will have ostrich. There's warthogs. There's the giraffes, of course. Um, oh my goodness. There's a lot of animals we could add in here. But if you guys have idea, ideas for more safari animals, then let me know and we can try to work on that too. But you know what I see that makes me pretty excited right now some sheep let's go get those sheep in fact if I collect those sheep and maybe take them over and isolate them back where I'm building a tent I wonder if that would help me out a little bit uh and I have some light I forgot I had liar birds that we caught oh my gosh over at the red wolf forest oh this is gonna be awesome Oh, but I need your wool sheep. I need your wool to make a tent for my guest, which is one of the like main projects I want to work on. And I should probably collect up these sheep and we should take them to the meadow of horses, I think, which is our farm. That's where we take a lot of the domesticated animals. So let me, let me tidy some of this up really quickly. There we go, a little snowball. Oh, that's right, I was gonna make smoothies. Oh, so much to do in the zoo, but don't worry. I just really had to show you guys those upgrades because they're pretty important for our zoo. Oh, all this trash, I can't believe people. But yeah, all those upgrades in the NPCs are super important for being able to show you guys things that we have coming up and ways that we can interact with the zoo. And personally, I'm a little bit of a sucker for the immersive roleplay aspect of it, but you guys know that by now. All right, so let's see. Come, there's a little pigu. We might trade the pigu for a warthog in a bit. Is this quicksand? I'm pretty sure this is quicksand. I don't think the answer to figuring out if this is quicksand, is, no Lily, is to like climb in it though. Is it? Let's see. Yep, that's quicksand. All right, I need to cover that puppy up with some dirt so that our animals don't drown in it. Good job, Lily. Very proud that you found it. All right, and we'll cover that up. Wonderful job, girl. And then let's see. Oh, there's a little maggot. That's fine. Oh, look at it. This is going to be awesome. This is a little bit more of a foresty area, a deciduous forest, but I think that it'll be okay for our elephants. We'll have to rehome the ants that are wandering around. I don't think they'd appreciate. Well, maybe they would appreciate the elephants. Oh, and then the turkey. We could take you to our turkey exhibit or maybe exchange it for um, some sort of savanna peafowl. Uh, not peafowl? What the heck? I meant a guinea fowl. I have no idea how guinea fowl turned into savanna pea fowl in my head. Look, are those pitcher plants? Are they pitcher plants? They're pitcher plants! Oh my goodness, I love pitcher plants. We'll have to remove these and take them over to our, um, our temperate forest zone. That'll be so cool. And there's another sheep and there's a fox. <gasps> we could put the fox in the temperate forest zone too. All right, come here, sheep, sheep. I'll have to go ahead and take you over to my meadow of horses as well because that'll be a good a good storage spot. But you can see there's the edge of our, our fence line. So this is a huge area. I might fill in a little bit of this lake, but I'm not sure. I think the elephants might enjoy rolling around in it, but we definitely have to trade out the animals here who are more um, like this guy. In fact, let's go ahead and catch him and then maybe we'll turn the pigs into warthogs today. That, or excuse me, into wild boars today. Oh, another pigu, let's catch him. Come here, buddy. <gasps> chickens! I love chickens! Oh my goodness! And there's actually more sheep and also more wild boar, which I probably need to be a little, like, actual wild boar. Uh, which I probably need to be a little cow for all of. Oh, and I'm hungry now. Alright, let's eat some of these old baked beans. I can't imagine this is good for me, but that's okay. Alright. Oh, and is that a horse? Awesome! Okay, so I do have the fence finished over here somewhere, don't I? I am pretty sure. I may not, uh, dang it, I may need to hire them to finish the fencing over here, but I could have sworn I did. I think I'm like approaching the edge of it, so I'm not gonna be too worried. All right, but there's definitely a few spots I'm gonna have to fill in. May I have your wool play sheep? I promise it's gonna become, eh, there we go. Harvested sustainably, gonna become a nice little tent for our guests to be in. Oh, I'm so excited. 
it's gonna be awesome to just settle in and get to building. There we go. All right, and lots and lots of chickens, which we could probably exchange for various birds of the savanna, which would be so cool. And then, yeah, right over here is where the fence should be, so I may have to pay them again. <laughs> no, more of my precious emerald coins. Oh, and sheep, sheep everywhere. I guess I could dye your wool. So we'll dye this black sheep's wool, and then there's another sheep over here. All right, and I don't have enough reusable safari nuts, so I'll have to come back for you, Mr. Sheep. But at least we've made a little bit of a dent. We have actually gathered up some of the pigs and some of the sheep from the safari zone to get ready to start exchanging them with more uh, Africa-based animals. And I think there's actually, yeah, a little path right here. <clears throat> Ma'am? You should not be throwing trash on the ground in a zoo. That is, I, I, I can, oh my gosh, there's more. Ah, and there's so many donations. Thank you, everyone. They're not like gonna really break the bank. That's not even enough to buy some proper dog food, but it's good to have some of those donations. But let's come down and we are actually going to see if Farmer Gerald wants to exchange a couple of these pigs today for some of these beautiful, uh, beautiful wild boars that he's got. And let's see. Yep, pigu, pigu. Pigu, pigu, pig, right, pig. Okay, I'm gonna have to talk with him because he's being stubborn about exchanging them. But let's see, deer, sheep, Thompson's gazelle. I think I wanna save the sheep because I always need more wool. So we'll probably take them to the meadow of horses next time. You guys will get a chance to actually get to see my farming zone where we gather up a lot of resources. Like I said before, a lot of talking right now, but so many of you are new to the zoo and our world is huge, you guys. It is so big. We have done so much work here and I'm really excited. We'll now have new projects to work on for our zookeeper experience points. We have got a few of the animals. I think, uh, I think a trip to go and actually go visit our farm and maybe gather up some of the lettuce that we have there for our giraffes on top of being able to drop off all of these sheep are are and that's a good time we'll, we'll do that we'll definitely go and we will visit the meadow of horses and then we also have the carpenters who we can start hiring to get little projects done a lot faster and once we get underway things are really going to be clipping and we're gonna have so much to do in the zoo and actually getting it done lily i'm so excited let's feed you some ostrich and not dwell on the fact that that's a little bit morbid since we're about to get some ostrich you guys are carnivores after all there you go puppies but all right guys wonderful good the flamingos are beautiful oh look at their feathery butts oh and there's a little capybara jumping up and down so we're gonna start getting into the actual like digging 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 building 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 by hand as well and i'm really looking forward to that so we need to go shear some sheep so we can make some tents so that we can get this area turned into a nice little guest spot and uh projects are gonna get underway i have a feeling that some of this is gonna take us a while but just feast your eyes on all the glory of the untamed wilderness, and rest assured, it is going to be transformed into a beautiful safari zone, complete with a jeep tour, I hope, and some elevated pathing, and maybe even a restroom for the guest at some points. <laughs> Definitely something important to do in the zoo. But alright everyone, I hope you are having a wonderful day and you've learned something new. So go forth, my friends, and be curious, and I will see you next time. Bye bye